So it's Riv, my nerdy gurdy is finally here. Um, huge thanks to Sergio Gonzalez for printing this out and doing it for me. It's, it's arrived. Um, looks relatively okay. Um, we'll have a look at it. I'm gonna. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> There's a lot of this. Wow. There's a lot of this. Let's see what we've got here. There's a handle. And I forgot what these things are called. These are the things that um, fret the string. They'll come back to me. There are The things that actuate the things that fret the, the, um, the string, and there's some tuners in there. Wow. Ooh, ooh, got a bit of a problem. Ooh, got a bit of a major problem actually. Um, that's broken. That's broken. Oh no, oh, that's completely broken. Um, oh no. That, one, that one's totally broken as well. I don't really know how to... Mm, I have to speak to them about that. I don't know how to fix that. They weren't flat on the body. They were on top of the other bits. So you can see how they've broken in transit. That's a real shame. Because these are the first steps that you do when you build it. Mm, I don't know if I can glue these together and somehow repair them all or not. Uh, let's see. It's, that's what the handle cranks on, the bearings and the screws and all the other bits. It's another bit of the broken bottom bit. Uh, this bag I think's come open, I think that's come out of there. There's plenty of bits in here. A lot of bits, I didn't quite realize there were this many bits. Uh, there's the wheel. Which looks like it's been glued together. That will be finishing. Bridge, other parts. This thing's called the, I think they call this the sheep. It's the headstock. Sides. And there's the body. Front and the back, and then here's the other bits of the headstock. Yeah, there we go. That's all the bits. So let's take a close up of what actually comes in the kit. There are some washers and some nuts, including some nylocks. There are four bearings and a couple of um, set screws. Then there are more screws and more little set screw things. There's tuners. These electrical ring connectors are used to hold the strings. Then you move on to the wheel and I think he's assembled that for me and I think I'll need to do some finishing work on that. There's a nut in there. There's this which goes into there which is how you crank it and here's the handle which he's also built for me. Looks alright, doesn't it? Then you have uh, your keys in there. Um, and then there's some smaller pieces. These are the bridge pieces. One of these is, is broken, so he's going to resend me one of those. Then I can actually remember the name now. You've got the tangents in here. There's big ones and small ones. Um, this is uh, when you glue one of the parts. This is a spacer that's just like a, a throwaway piece that you use for that. Um, there's a couple of strap pins in here and a few other bits. And then you've got the headstock and the other wooden bits. Um, let's move on to the first thing you have to do. So the first thing you do is you glue these onto this. You need to pick which is the nicer side 
of the wood and use that as the outside. You see that's got a slightly nicer pattern on it than this side, so I've picked that. This one is a bit of a no-brainer because you can see where it's got the sort of burn marks here, but it looks much better on the other side. So I've done that. So these um, were very heavily broken when I got it, so it's made this a bit more difficult, but I managed to glue them on and secure them and, and get it on. So that's part one. So what you need for that is, of course, your wood adhesive, PVA, um, paintbrush, and then put this on here, use the paintbrush to spread it, and then clamp it, and this stuff dries in about eight hours or so. It really sticks hard. Well, in my, in my house, with my central heating in the winter, this stuff really sticks hard in about five minutes, and you can't really move it after about five minutes. So you need to get it right. I've got most of this gap right. Um, I've measured it, and I think it's three mil. I've got it right all the way around. There was one little bit where I noticed I was a bit close here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shave this. It looks worse, actually, on the camera. It's not as bad as that. There you go. This bit here is a little bit close, just this little bit here. But I think the rest of it is pretty much spot on. Um, I've heard people say you can use pegs, and they seem to have worked. So, yeah, that's the first bit, and then that's roughly what comes in the kit. I mean, there's all kinds of printed... Um, you know, there's these these bits that are cut out, laser cut from the wood. So, yeah, there's you can view those if you download the the dot thing file. So yeah, that's the first part and what comes in the kit. So what I've done here is I've marked with a bit of black marker where I've gone slightly too close, and you can see you can barely see it. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, and there's a bit here. And a little bit here, so I'm going to try and work out if I can just gently take a little bit off that edge. It's not much at all, but it would just make it sit absolutely flush. It only sits like less than a millimeter off. So let me see if I can very gently remove the edge of that, or maybe it's best left alone, but we'll see. So I've just buzzed the edges with the uh, with a Dremel and a file, just to give me a little bit more. Um, they weren't far off. But I think it was worth doing just so it doesn't stick out too much. And of course, I've used this as the thickness. Remember, this is wood, so it's a natural, it's a natural material. So there is going to be a little bit of variation, a few tenths of a mil. So yeah, I've just just made it in a couple of the bits just to make it a little bit better. Partly, one of them, it was because it was, it's because it snapped, and it's where I've rejoined it, and the join was sticking out. So I've pushed the join in a little bit, but it's still, it's still going to be strong enough. So there we go, that bit's done. So here we are with part one of the sheep's head. So there's like this strengthening piece gets glued to the outside of these. There's the other one. They're all pegged on and clipped. Um, loads and loads of glue splurted out in the sort of tuna holes. So I used a brush to clean it out and then I used a cloth to wipe it around. Next bit is to glue the two. Next bit is to glue the two bits that make the bearing. There's a bit at the back and a bit at the front. Again, cover them in glue. Try and wipe as much of it off as possible. That spills out the sides. Clamp it together and leave it. So here we are in the log cabin looking at the uh, sheep's head for the hurdy-gurdy. So I'm actually pretty pleased at the way I've, I've managed to get this quite accurately stuck together. These, these edges are pretty, are pretty close. Um, I mean, there is obviously a few mil in the wood, but yeah, I've done good. But the way, the way to remember how to do this is that these extra bits go on the outside. So the way this fits together is fairly obvious when you look at the instructions, and I can put a picture of the instructions up. But what I wanted to talk about here was refinishing some of the wood. I'm spending an increasing amount of time in my log cabin with files, and I'm finding, I mean, I, I'm not a woodworker. I generally do metal work, if I do any. I, I'm, I'm really not very good at woodworking. So I'm using these little, and I guess they're the wrong files because they're probably meant for metal, but they work. I'm using these little files in a lot of these slots. So you can see in here, for example, I'm having to make these a bit bigger. So I'm having to use those with some of my files um, to get stuff to fit, and a little bit, a little bit in, in here just to make these fit. You know, um, and then sometimes I'm having to sand the mating pieces. So if you look in, in here, these are the bits that push in. I'm having to sand these a little bit just to get them to fit nicely. So they're still going in really tight, um, but the problem is at the moment they're so tight. I don't know if you can see this, but it's chipping the edge of the wood off. It's compressing it. So clearly there's some some minor inaccuracies in the way this kit is made. So, and that's fine because it's wood. So yeah, I just need to do a little bit of um, sort of 
sanding on these. The other tool I have that's quite handy is I've got um, a Dremel. I mean, you don't have to buy a Dremel one. There's loads of fake ones out there. And this certainly isn't a, cr um, a proper Dremel piece. Like these flap wheels, they're really handy if you need to take a bit more off or true up anything, let's say, on one of these edges. So here we are. I'm now going to glue and put this together. I don't need to show you me building this because it's fairly straightforward. Make sure you dry fit it a few times um, and just make sure that you get this piece the right way round. It's fairly obvious which way it goes because these two slots line up with these two slots. So it needs to go in not that way because then the slots wouldn't line up. It needs to go in this way so the slots line up. And I think this piece which slides in in here needs to go in at the end after you've glued it all together otherwise it's going to be very very difficult to fit anyway let's get on with it and see how we go so my inexperience with woodworking is starting to show a little bit um, whilst I managed to get this all together and you can see I don't have a gap there which is what it says in the instructions that's nice and tight and all this went in the only problem was that I ended up with these as I forced them in even though I sanded them bigger I didn't sand them bigger enough so I've lost that and that this side's better but I'm, I'll have to neaten those up afterwards but it'll all be glued together and it's not going to go anywhere but it's a little bit frustrating because I thought I'd dressed them enough but clearly I hadn't um, yeah I mean that's my lack of experience of woodworking so it is what it is you can do your best and that's what I've done so let's have a look at what I've done so far. So this is the inner bearing support, which I've been fairly accurate with. That's the lid, which is three bits joined together. And I tried to choose the nicest looking part for the top, middle and bottom. Of course, this has to be the bottom, but the side of it. And I've glued that together. That's actually pretty accurate. I've done a good job on that. Key box. Again, I'm quite pleased with myself. Um, I marked all the edges as a P and a P and a B and a B and I've marked the bottom and to make sure I could grind it in and uh, not grind it in, sand it in so I'm used to working with metal <laughs> um, yeah I sand it all in and there's a little bit of a gap along there as you can see but there isn't here and it's absolutely square and the lid fits on really perfectly so I guess it's just working with wood so these are glued on remember these were broken so I've repaired the brakes um, I've also been sanding the edges where I've got it a little bit close so I can get the edge flush that's done and the last bit I've just done probably least said soonest mended in my last video was the uh, the sheep where you know, I haven't done a particularly great job but hey hopefully it should work all right right then let's take a look at the rear cover piece I'm going to glue that next so you can see that there's a little plastic piece here that's included to help you put it together correctly fairly straightforward put that one in there like that there you go it's clipped in so that's just glue it straighten it up and then that will hold it in place it's the rear cover apparently there it is glued together after I made it what I did was I took the black thing off um, once it was held with pegs and I wiped all the glue off the black thing. I know it's printed and not wood, so I just didn't want it to stick. So I assume it wouldn't stick, but it's, I'd rather not have to smash it out. So yeah, there we go. That is that piece. I'll put it with the others. So let's talk about drone bridges. So you get the choice of two in the book. You've got this one, or you've got this one. And they come in this cutout and this cutout. Now, this is the first original design that Jack made and this was made by another fella. I know that this is the improved one which gives you more adjustment. There's these two little screws so you can move the strings a bit more hopefully which is why I'm going to go with this. Um, you can see here in the instructions. So I've glued it and I've clamped it. Now I haven't shown how to glue it because it only goes one way. There's only one way that you can put this together. So yeah, I've glued it and I still can't believe that the screws just go straight into the wood but they, they definitely do. There's no there doesn't seem to be a nut on the other side. These literally just screw into here. So you're going to have to be a little bit gentle because you're screwing metal into plywood and you don't want to strip the thread on the plywood. So yeah, there we go. That is the drone bridge support choice. So let's have a look at assembling the supports for the buzzing bridges.
This confuses me because it says bridges with an S on the end, which makes you think it's plural, there's more than one, but from what I can see there really is only one. So this buzzing bridge needed quite a lot of cutting and trimming to fit. So I've cut and trimmed it, I'll now glue it. I'm not ready to fit it to the body yet, but it came out of this. It's fairly simple, it only goes together one way. Um, mine doesn't have the two holes that are shown, but I guess I can drill those afterwards if they are needed. So I will glue this together and leave it, and then we're done. Okay, so we're now at the bit where you glue the the sheep to the body. This is the inside and the outside is there. You can see the machine heads will be here and the wheel will be there, etc. Now this is by far and away the most difficult bit I've done so far. There's lots of different bits that click in together. I've managed to get it all now, but you've got to be so, so careful. What I recommend that you do is take a file and file all of these little bits just to make sure they're big enough. See, I've had to alter in here. I've had to file this down a bit to make it fit because where my frames were broken, you see there's a break there, there was a break here, there was lots of breaks in my frames due to transit damage. This wasn't quite accurate enough, so I've, even though I thought I got it earlier, it wasn't good enough. Also, when I fitted it, I managed to pull this one off and break the glue. Sorry, this one with all the pegs and I've re-glued it. I was quite surprised that that went, so I might have to strengthen that later. In the kit, you get two of these, which is where the strings run over to the machine heads from the body. Now, I couldn't work out why there was two, but after doing this, I now know why. Because when you try and prise this in and out, you immediately put your thumb on this and almost snap it off. So, what I did was, when I, when I was doing it, this, this one here, it felt a bit wobbly, so I didn't snap it off, but I'm hoping with a bit more glue it will hold, I don't know, sorry the camera's focusing on the pegs, but yeah, this this one I've had to re-glue, so be extremely careful when you do this pit, do not put your fingers on here, and when you test fit it, remember it will click in, so you're supposed to test fit everything first, but this one, I haven't had a chance to clear this glue up yet, I will clear this up, but this is on the inside so it's not the end of the world, but this this is quite a difficult piece to do, you've got to be really patient, really careful, take your time, um, I don't know, with the test fit you've got to be so careful because it will click in here, and levering this off is very scary because it feels like something's going to snap, so yeah, good luck with this piece, I mean may, maybe someone who's, who's um, experienced with woodworking will be better at this than me, but anyway, in the picture it also says to fit these two parts as well, and they go basically in here, in the headstock. It's, it's fairly obvious where they go, they can only fit in one place and they only go one way around with it. Thing is, I was unable to fit them during this build because I just couldn't do it all at once. So what I'm going to do is let this dry, so eight hours later I'm going to come back and I'm going to fit these. And if I, if I have to file them down a bit to get a nice fit, I'm going to file them down because I certainly don't want to be pushing them in and putting more strain on this. I want to let this dry and then treat it a little bit carefully till it's all together because it will become stronger as other bits are added to it. It's just at the moment it's it's a little bit fragile. So yeah, this was a difficult stage. Um, and remember, don't push these things when you put it on. There is two in the kit, but if you've got to unglue it, this glues into like eight different pieces. So steaming it and undoing it is going to be a right pain and you really don't want to be there. Good luck.